Okay, so in, in addition to the, the rod cells, you know, rod cell photoreceptors, which are found primarily in the periphery of the retina, there's many of them all wired up to one great big, you know, bipolar cell, a diffuse bipolar cell, and can they connect to a great big ganglion cell? And they gather information from the periphery of the retina, from, you know, the sides of your view, not what you're foveating. And they're good in low light conditions because, you know, they have... They're very, very, you know, a great deal of surface area, lots of membranous discs back here in the outer segment, lots of pigment. Uh, they don't really discriminate across the visible light spectrum because they, you know, express rhodopsin, which is a pigment that'll absorb, you know, any wavelengths within the range of visible light. Um, and then you've got the cone cells, right, of course, which, you know, this is the one that's under construction, but this is an L-type that sits in the back of the retina like this. And, you know, it there's typically three types of cone cells and they're found primarily you know really packed in tightly in the fovea that sort of pitted portion of the retina that you you know when you really want to see detail uh, you need light for this you need daylight for this right you got to turn the lights on for this uh, you can you can discriminate across you know multiple you know wavelengths you know the red or the l type the m type and the s type um, and you know in some cases a fourth cone photoreceptor in addition to these you know, which are tightly packed at the fovea, you know, and are linked to little bipolar cells, right? And then, you know, to smaller or what they call P-type ganglion cells. Um, well, there's another kind of photoreceptive cell um, in the retina that was identified, you know, about, you know, a couple of decades ago now. Um, that's actually not at the photoreceptive layer at the very back of the retina, but it's one of the gang, it's some of the ganglion cells that are found at the most you know, rostral or the most um, anterior, you know, sort of portion of the retina. Some of the ganglion cells that are found at the ganglion cell layer, remember that's going to be the output layer for the eye, you know, its axons, the axons here are going to form the optic nerves that leave each eyeball and work their way back to the thalamus. Um, some of these ganglion cells are what we call intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells. And I apologize because that literally is what they call them. They're called the intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells. Um, but they absorb light as well. And they can signal back, you know, through the optic nerve, you know, to the rest of the brain and impact, um, you know, how we respond. So these particular cells in the ganglion cell layer, the intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells, express a pigment that primarily absorbs in response to the S, you know, and the short wave end of the spectra, so uh, visible light spectrum. So they, they, they absorb primarily more blue and blue light. Um, and what they do is when they absorb blue light, they actually, you know, their projections go back, you know, from, you know, through the optic nerve. And I've actually got a, a brain. I've taken the, um, the cerebellum off here, but you can sort of see you know, the, the eyeballs would be right here and here, right? And these, this right here is an optic nerve coming from one eyeball, and here's the optic nerve coming from another. We're going to see here's the chiasm right there. And then you can see these other big tracks that go back there. That's called the, op, those are called the optic tracks past this big crossing section called the chiasm in the middle. But some of the, the projections from the intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells are going to, you know, come out the optic nerves of the left and right eye. Um, but they're going to synapse in a structure called the hypothalamus. In a particular nucleus in the hypothalamus, it's called the suprachiasmatic nucleus because super means above, superior, right? The chiasm, where we're going to see the optic nerves will come together. They'll sort of cross as a crossing of the optic nerves. And they'll, they'll synapse in the SCN of the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus. And then projections from the hypothalamus, from that nucleus, will work their way back to a gland, that isn't shown on here, but it's actually, this is the dorsal surface of the brainstem. So I've taken off the cerebellum here, right? This is the dorsal surface, and you can see these little bumps again. Remember, there's the superior colliculi, which are important for visual orienting. Something unusual, you look, you stare, you go, what's that? And then the lower ones are called the inferior colliculi. Um, those are, we're going to see, important for auditory um, function. They're going to be doing some, you know, brainstem level um, auditory processing, you know, before sending things on to the thalamus and to the temporal lobes. Um, but the the hypothalamic projections that come out of the suprachiasmatic nucleus, you know, it's coming from these intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells in the retinas. They'll go to a gland that's between the colliculi on the dorsal surface of the brainstem. That's called the pineal gland. 
And if you expose yourself to blue light, well, that'll signal the hypothalamus, the SCN, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, to then signal the, um, the pineal gland to stop release of a hormone into the blood called melatonin. And melatonin, it turns out, is actually made from serotonin that we talked about earlier in terms of neurotransmitters. But melatonin is released into the bloodstream, so it's a hormone. It's going to go all around the body and affect the brain and the body and all sorts of places. Um, and, you know, melatonin is release is shut off by exposure to blue light uh, and, you know, detected by uh, the intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells in the retina. So, um, you know, melatonin, when light levels drop, you know, let's say at dusk or something, and the blue light levels in particular drop, you know, as you go to dusk and it gets darker, well, that will um, allow for, you know, remove inhibition off of the pineal gland. So there'll be release of melatonin into the blood. And melatonin is a, is a signal, blood-borne signal, you know, to start drifting off, to start, you know, shutting down those you know, modulatory systems in the brainstem and, you know, start shifting you into, you know, a sleepy state and go to sleep. Um, so <laughs> what we tend to do, though, of course, right, is we tend to sit in bed, right, and stare at these screens, you know, and, you know, the, when they're, when they look really good, when they look bright and you can and colorful and all that, there's a lot of blue light basically in these screens. Um, and, you know, what you can do now is, of course, you can shift into the night mode or whatever it is. And that's actually, that's more helpful, um, you know, for allowing for, you know, melatonin release to, uh, you know, begin and help getting, preparing your brain and your body actually for, you know, falling asleep. But, you know, having a great big, you know, television screen in the bedroom and you're watching Netflix or Prime or something like that, you know, with a lot of light and all this kind of stuff, that's, that's going to delay your ability to drop off because of detection, particularly at the blue end of the spectrum, by these intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells, another set of, you know, photoresponsive cells that are found in our retinas um, that are at the ganglion cell layer, the most, you know, anterior or, you know, uh, rostral, you know, uh, extent of the retina, and our output cells, like other ganglion cells, whose axons will, you know, extend back, you know, synapse in the hypothalamus, which will then communicate with the pineal gland back here on the back of the brainstem, the dorsal surface of the brainstem, and shut off the release of melatonin and make it, make it harder, you know, for us to go to sleep.